Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our Let's Play video blogcast thing. Uh, I'm AWAC. I'm Gamma Dev. And today we're doing Monster Manor, uh, Escape from Monster Manor, published by Electronic Arts and written by me, mostly. Uh, <clears throat> and right, right away there's a couple of things I wanna, I wanna call attention to right off the bat. These are just this uh, screen right here, the 3DO experience, and then this logo, watch carefully. No tearing. Thank you. <laughs> so now I have to oh, less uh, another visitor on the stage here. Don't be afraid. Be terrified. <laughs> Foolish mortal, you are lost. Even now, evil's dark hand reaches for your soul. But since you are here, I, one who has lived through the ages, will kindly tell you a story. Listen carefully to my tale, for one day it may save your life. Centuries ago, in a distant land, a mysterious cult forged a great disk of gold. It sparkled with captured sunlight and protected its creators from all evil. This talisman shielded generations of worshippers from even the darkest night's terror. But this exile of evil did not last. Blind greed and petty jealousy led to the talisman being broken and divided among reckless factions. By trying to secure the talisman's power for themselves, these fools reduced it to fragments of useless metal. Ghastly pools and black horror once again commanded the night. The forces of evil, unchecked by the talisman's brilliant light, threatened the world with endless gloom. Seeking to fight the tide of terror, the one who built this very house tried to capture again the glory of the talisman. Traveling the world, he collected the long forgotten pieces and succeeded in reassembling the golden relic. His quest nearly cost him his life. But had he saved the world? No! His descendants fled the manor when they discovered evil and found ways to threaten the talisman with destruction. New horrors! Deathly forces gather! It grows even too dangerous for me! Fool! Flee this mad place while you can! The talisman nears the end of its reign! Heed me! Fly far! Fly fast! A dark god approaches and hell strains at the gate! Finishing off with a uh, Adobe Premiere shatter effect. <clears throat> so that was Les Hedger uh, as the uh, the evil narrator, and the uh, and the music, uh, and actually, and also the uh, the script for that was written by Bob Biera. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so the way I, I've decided to do this because the game is just too long to compress into even two hours of continuous things is I want to do this in an episodic form. So we're going to do. Uh, one maybe two maps per episode and uh, and we'll snark on that opening animation in a subsequent episode uh, when I can but um, <clears throat> but yeah so here we are um, the beginning uh, beginning of the game um, <laughs> uh, and we can see the intro again yay uh, so we're gonna leave the music on uh, for this there's actually a couple of levels in there I remember some people saying uh, that there are some some of the background music that I didn't like, and uh, maybe we'll turn that off later on. But uh, there, right now, there are no high scores. Well, there are. <laughs> These are uh, hard coded into the game. Uh, and there's this is uh, something we added later. Um, we realized that some people might want to just play one map, so you can play just one map but it won't keep your score. It won't remember anything of that. So if you want to actually play the game front to back uh, and keep score, you say play for keeps. And we would load a game, but there weren't any. So so I guess uh, we could, did you have any anything that you wanted to? I'll, I'll grill you as you're going along. <laughs> okay, all yeah. right. See how well you can multitask. Uh, <laughs> it's probably not very well, probably. Um, but well, the first, also, the first also, couple of levels are pretty easy. Though, the first so. couple of levels are pretty easy. So this this uh, first episode is probably going to go relatively quickly. Um, but I also found my copy of the CD-ROM containing all the source code and art assets. And I uh, actually not need to write a program to take apart the uh, the 3DO cell files. But um, I've, all the maps, all the source code, and I was looking over it. Um, 
uh, in prep for this game. Also, you know, you notice how the screen is kind of gray. There's, yes, yeah. There's a there's a story behind that too. So here we are. There's, so, this controls are very simple. Left joypad turns you to the left. Right joypad turns you to the right. And uh, here's a little surprise. Kim Tempest left for for you, everybody. Hello. <laughs> He's harmless. He's just uh, decorative. Yeah. Uh, forward joypad moves you forward. Backward joypad moves you back. And then the shoulder buttons make you slide from side to side. <clears throat> so here are the keys. You all doors are locked. You have to find a key to open a door. Um, all, but there's, but they're they're not like color coded or anything. So it's basically any key can open any door. But if you run out of keys, um, so we'll just like walk up to this one. Oops, that was shooting. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Ah. Yes. You know how people shoot. That? Everybody shoots that the first time they see it. <laughs> I'm it's sure they. Like they I'm sure they do. On it, so it's like. So the little little diamonds are worth. Uh, oh, hello! Here's our first monster. It's the zombie, and uh, they just basically make a beeline for you, and they just start hacking away at you. Ow. Okay. Uh, you want to show people how to die. Is yeah. Just, <laughs> I, well, that, well, I mean, it's a nice effect. Then your hand gets all uh, right, right, skeletonized or whatever. Exactly. Uh, so, like immediately. So, obviously, you were. When you started making this, Doom hadn't been released yet. When you started making no, this, no, Doom. Yes, when I started making this, and, there, and God, there's so many stories behind this. But basically, um, was what are we going to do? And I, I said I can probably do a Wolfenstein style thing because this is all you can just looking at it. You can tell it's all on a grid, um, just like uh, the original Wolfenstein 3D was. Uh, so I said I could probably do that. So this is Wolfenstein in a haunted house. And let's pick up both keys here. Yeah. But, yeah, Doom, I remember when I bought this, you know, mm -hmm. first day it came out, because, you know, there were... <laughs> right. so, we're still in the uh, honeymoon period of the 3DO, of like, yay, new software. And I bought this, and I remember, I'd actually, again, I brought this into work, because we were uh -huh. very interested in, you know, the state of the art of console gaming. And so they'd seen Doom. Aha, uh -huh. help. And then... Watch my hand get better. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, that wonderful sound effect. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Bob Beer, very good, very good sound person. Mm -hmm. Long career mm -hmm. in uh, in games. Did the music, did the sound effects, and did all sorts of. Uh, yeah. we, we worked with him on a few games. Oops. Post this. What? What did you? Pushed, do? Oh, did you hit the? Uh, I pushed the wrong button. Uh -oh. I thought I thought I was bringing up the stat screen. No. I, the I, haven't, I haven't played this in twenty years. Okay. <laughs> I would think this would be like totally burned into your muscle memory. Like. You know, you're gonna what you're you're probably gonna see me like drunken driving all over. There we go. Okay, so I'm at hundred health, so I don't need. Oh, th so now you can hear the sound effect. If you're full, it makes the bzzz noise. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. You were talking about Bob yeah. Vieira. So it's like, well, okay, Bob Vieira. You said we worked with him later at another mm -hmm. company, and he did music for us. But you know. He's a, he he worked even like on the um, like the old Atari 8-bit stuff. Yes, and uh, I actually I he remember, worked on the Atari Lynx. He did yeah. a, I think oh, stuff yeah. on the C64 as well. Yeah. Oh, because I actually I, I surprised him once when, uh, when we were working on a project. And I mentioned to him I said, "Oh, I have one of your earliest games," and he and said, "Which like one?" And it was shot. oh yeah, nope. Uh huh. <laughs> and he said, "Which one?" And he said, and I said, "Gremlins," and he was like, "That was released." <laughs> <laughs> because it was uh, it was for the Atari 5200 and it was one of those games that came out like just after the crash uh, so it was like very few it was a great game mm -hmm. it's like it's also like one of the few I think it's they, they maybe ported it to like the Apple II but not to the Atari 8-bit but it was on the Atari 5200 so it's a pretty rare it's a really great game mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those rare you know hey this is actually a good movie license game that actually turned out well really and he did the sound for it, and it's it's really good because it's got the the Gremlins music, and it's got all those wonderful sound effects. But it's mm. it's one of these like doesn't fit into an easy genre category. It's mm. sort of like it basically it takes you to the story of Gremlins, but it's sort of like it's sort of almost like a um, 
maybe it's like an early version of Plants vs. Zombies, oh. where it's sort of like, okay, keep the keep the gremlins from multiplying by keeping them away from water, mm-hmm. distract them by turning on the TV. There's, the... there's something I want to point out here. So I don't have a key. I've run out of keys. So here's the sound that's made when you try and open the door without a key. Okay, that's me rattling the doorknob in Phil Burke's office. <laughs> And considering he's the sound right, so hardware the, guy, that's, yeah, that's exactly. That's so ironic. We were, yeah. yeah, we were right there, and it says like, "I need, I need some sound effects." I think the uh, the key sound is is that too. When I pick up the keys, that's my keys. <laughs> just like, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just like I need, we need this. This was done. This game was made in six months. Was this the, now? This wasn't the first game you guys had attempted to make. That's correct. You were going to do something a little more ambitious, and yes. then uh, reality yeah. set in. <laughs> reality set in, um, that reality being uh, my ability to, to execute on that. Um, I'm hoping to get... Uh, hello there. And, oh, another, oh yes. su- another surprise from Kim. Rated M for... Oh, wait. Not rated M, because the ESRB hadn't been invented yet, yes. kids. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yes, I had started off on another game. This, this is why this game is a little bittersweet for me, because... Um, the game that I originally started working on, uh, I couldn't complete. And so we got to like three weeks out from summer CES, and we needed to have something to show. Because not only were we promoting the game, we were promoting the platform. And... Oh, hello guys. Ah. And it was apparent that what we had wasn't going to be showable. So we had we got in a room, we got in a meeting room, and we said, what are we going to do? I said, do we keep going with what we have, or do we just stop and... By the way, the blues are the most valuable. Uh, or do we do we stop? Or do, yeah, do we keep going with what we have, or do we stop and do something else? And we made the very difficult decision to stop and do this. Um, and so, with three weeks, we had a demo up for Summer CES. Uh, and then... What am I... Really? Is it that big? Okay. Um... <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm probably going to get lost. Um, well, luckily, yeah. So, so three weeks we and so in three weeks we had a demo for right. CES, uh, and then like five months later, five or six months later, the game was done. It, ah. Anybody else? By the way, these monsters are not very smart. Basically, it's they use what I call um, ravenous bug bladder beast of trawl logic. In that, if you don't see them, they don't see you. So only when the camera sweeps across them do they activate and start. Coming Although for you. I've now I've played this and I've had. There's, like, you but there's a couple room. of exceptions to this. Okay, that's what I thought. There had to okay, be. the doors, despite their state, are always transparent. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because I've well I've had it where the I've gone to a room and didn't check a corner, mm-hmm. and then had one of them come up behind me and start whacking away. Mm-hmm. So. And they also, check, they check one thing I'm, uh, compared to like even, no. even a lot of modern games, yeah, these guys pursue you forever. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah. I've had the you know I've had the thing where it's like I've gone and you know haven't encountered anybody for a while and then turn around and like oh there's a guy I thought I'd left in the dust you know. Uh huh. No, they they come after you, but they're they don't. Um, they get hung up on corners. But oh yes, they get hung up on corners. They can't go around corners. Uh, they basically make a beeline for you and right. then stop. Whenever they see, here's here I am drunk driving. Hey, that's believe it or not, that's not. That's still how a lot of games do this. With uh... no, I was, I was reading a hello, <laughs> I was reading um, uh, a, uh, an article in Game Developer Magazine, and pathfinding is a non-trivial problem. Yes, and I was just like, wow, I wish I'd had this article when I was writing this game. Yeah, although it's it's actually, I mean, it's gotten better, but you know, it's it's not so much pathfinding so much as as getting them to follow a path intelligently mm-hmm. to not make it look like they're pathfinding um so you know most games that's why zombies are really popular in games as enemies besides uh-huh. being you know uh, if you kill them who cares right you know exactly. there's, there's no moral outrage group of zombies that was another discussion we had when we were creating this game um here let me just <laughs> i'm just going to talk about this for a bit so in 1992-1993, Senator Lieberman and Senator Feinstein decided to get totally outraged about video game violence. Um, and the uh, what is it? The catalyst for this was like 20 seconds out of 
uh, Night Trap. Right. Right. Um, and I'd, I'd like to do a Let's Play on Night Trap. Something I can't find a copy of it here. I don't think I actually ever had many 3D I, games. I have a copy. I'll take one. But, but anyway, so, this, so there's this big kerfuffle and things just like, you know, and so the, the, uh, the, the noise in the air was, you better regulate yourselves or we're going to do it for you. And so we actually had a discussion about what we're doing in this game, like shooting things. And what we basically agreed on around the table was, first of all, um, you're in a haunted house with all these creatures intent on murdering you. What are you ex supposed to do? And second, they're already dead, so you can't kill them. So it's okay. Right. Uh, so How do you kill something that's already dead? Exactly. Yeah, so, <laughs> right. That's monster matter, right? So. Uh-huh. But, I mean, that's why, you know, of course, Wolfenstein. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> you know, it's like they're, they're the other perfect enemy. It's like, you know, hey, they're Nazis, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, that they're perennial. Although, people who are German kind of get a little... Oh, they annoyed get annoyed at that. They get annoyed at that. It's like when, to, when <laughs> yeah, when when do we ever, oh, pick that up? Damn it! Oh, no, um, I've I've had the. It's not just if you're shooting Germans. Oops. If you're shooting anybody, they're just adverse to you. If you have a game that is, involves shooting people, nah. odds are you're gonna have a really tough time getting to Germany if you can get in there. So it's not right. Even nowadays, I mean, I'm working on a game that has basically zombies as a character. We we have to have, constantly have the, you know, can we do this in Germany discussion. Mm. It's like okay, you can. You can shoot them, right. but you can't set them on fire. It's like, well, okay. what are, what's the flamethrower, the flamethrower going to do? Or the, you uh -huh. know, we have mods in our game where it's like bullets that cause things to catch fire and stuff mm -hmm. like that. What are they going to do? It's like, well, as long as they don't react to the pain, maybe it's okay. Oh, so they don't scream and flail. Yes, and... exactly. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's weird. So, at some point, we're just, it's like, okay, well, you know, we could kill them with kindness or something <laughs> but it's like you know is it worth it to do it but yeah the the germans are sensitive to violence in their video games period it's not mm -hmm. just you know killing it, they actually don't object to killing nazis just because they're nazis it's not like they're like pro-nazi or anything it's just no like, no no they just object to shooting humans or anything that might vaguely resemble a human i think i think they have a heightened sensitivity to yeah but make, it, making it easy for people to do that sort of thing yeah you know? I mean, that's natural. So, here, so here's another... Um, let's see if I can remember which button it was. Uh, here we go. The map. I didn't want to do the map. Because apparently I have a superpower, which is I can find my way around... If I've been somewhere once, I can find my way around there again. And so I pretty much had these... I could just, you know... Even when Stefan was cranking out new maps, I would go near, 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 and I would find... Oh, yeah, it's over here. And I would just go... And everybody else would get lost. And I yes. said, what? What do you need a map for? Here. And I would just drive to the place. It's just like, okay, but you're special, Leo. You have to do a map. So, right. I, <laughs> so I had to do the map. Uh, and then you're like, oh, maps are hard. No, I mean, actually. I, well, I, well I, obviously because the map is the actual game level. But it's it, well, in, it is. In one but sort of. Basically, so every time I draw a, uh, like, so like one of these textures here, right. I, mar I put a set of flag on it saying, I've seen it. And yeah. then I just sweep through the map looking for all the all the right. um, I've seen this right. bits. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Over That's here. the advantage of when you represent your, your nah. game level like this. Now these guys. No. Okay, they are dangerous. Yes. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because so they vomit at you. Right. But the way they do it, it. Hello. Whoops. Come here. Okay. The way they do it is. Uh, I think it was um, it was uh, John Loop who wrote the logic for that. And what he does is, when he wants to create spit, hello, he allocates a free object slot. He says, I need a free object slot, so he allocates it. Uh, and then uses that to create the vomit at you. And let's pick up the fragment. Uh, sound effect. Um, <clears throat> ooh, I'm out of, you're, you're I'm out low of on ammo. Health. You're low on health, too. Uh, how how low? Well, no, not that low. Because I need I need ammo more than I need health. Uh, so he allocates a free object slot. The thing is, and I don't know if this is a bug or something he did deliberately. He allocates all the free object slots. So if you've been killing a bunch of monsters, that all those all the slots that they used to occupy are now free. So the more uh, monsters you kill, the longer the stream of vomit gets. And each particle of vomit, hello. Uh, <laughs> it's the first level. Uh, will 
each particle of vomit will uh, do anything from like 5 to 15 points of damage. So you can like end up getting killed very quickly by the floating heads. Ah, come on, so, get in there. Sounds like a bug, but it also sounds like it could be something to like scale up the difficulty. See what I mean? Yeah. Ah. Jeez, my aim is terrible. I'll be right by a big health uh, thing. Ooh. So, okay. ooh, a lens flare. <laughs> Which was actually a big deal, because you couldn't actually do I that. I think, yeah. I th Real time, effectively on the... No, it, well, th th that was... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi there. Um, yeah, Kim Tempest did all the animation for the monsters. Um, I'm not sure. I think she used some Photoshop effect for the flashy. Yeah. Uh, for the flashy effect. Six, seven. Yeah. So yeah, now I mean, the boss monsters are basically a palette swap. Or yeah, palette swap, and you have. <laughs> but yeah. There you go. That, he turned normal color at the last right. minute, so you basically have to. That's almost like um, pound on him. That game that does that. Dark Chambers does that, where it's like the hardest. Every whenever you kill a monster, you don't really kill him. You just demote him to the next layer of the monster. Oh. It, and people find that very weird, and I was like, I'm, I can kind of see why I did that. Sort of like the health points and the monster are like the same index or something. So it's like, <laughs> it's I'm like, I'm going to recharge um, ammo because for all the ammo and health you have left over, you get extra points. Ah, I did not. Pro tips. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you've got a yeah. copy of this laying around. Yes. Oops, come on. That's yeah. I mean, like, the graphics in this are actually real. I mean, A, it runs really smooth. That's great. It runs. Uh, that to... was very important to me. Frame rate was very important yeah. to me. I, I, in fact, during development, I said, if I could get 60 frames a second consistently, I'd do it in wireframe. <clears throat> but, <laughs> yes, but I was, frame rate was very important. Yeah. Uh, I could have gotten frame rate better. I was actually uh, experimenting with a different algorithm for finding the visible cubes, but right. I couldn't make it work in time so i right. used my first but approach it, yeah except but you know like i said earlier um like I, when i showed oh every night when i showed this to people at work they they thought this looked better than doom now you know no. now well and, <laughs> I, and, I, and I find out like what they what they meant because you know to to a lay person it's sort of like okay they're mm -hmm. looking at the wall textures and the wall right. textures are higher res than what doom doom was stuck in 8-bit right it was also probably about a quarter of the res wall textures that you're seeing here yeah the also yeah i think they used um they would they would inflate more they would pixelate more and well, let's, yeah let's yeah. finish the level right. up here so and so they were responding to that and they're like in, but you know of course i'm here, thinking floor ceiling here comes less again oh did i forget to tell you about that charming visitor who came before you <laughs> poor fellow lost his head in an unfortunate accident we haven't yet gotten rid of him entirely <laughs> so yeah so frame rate was very very important to right. me um and so i had a uh, a cheesy way of figuring out um uh where where first first of all i i, I created a view cone right. of all possible cubes and then i would try and prune that out um so there there is actually a fair amount of redundant rendering going on which i was hoping to get rid of but it but it turned out to be good enough for most people Right. Um, well, I also heard some people getting motion sick. If you yeah, if you run high enough frame rate on an engine like this, mm -hmm. you're, you're just bound to get. I mean, if, it doesn't matter really. I mean, um, if you want to get somebody really sick, play on a large <laughs> screen TV. Yeah. The Xbox 360 version marathon that they have on Xbox Live Arcade. Oh, I because they they took the the exact same al rendering algorithm. Mm -hmm. That they used and all the original assets, they upresed them a little bit, uh -huh. but they're pretty much the same thing. So it has that weird kind of, uh, uh, you know, ninety degree camera. Yes. And so things kind of distort a little bit as you're turning. Mm, yeah. It has that super wide. And so if you have a large enough screen, people will just hurl. I mean, they will. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, marathon on the 360 because it runs naturally because it's, it's such a low demand game. Mm -hmm. It runs at you know 60. It runs at full frame rate. You know, HD, mm -hmm. a large view screen. It's just people just go, you know. <laughs> oh man! It just you know, because large enough, it starts to cover, cover your peripheral vision. You're kind of mm -hmm. just messed up. But this, yeah, it can have the same effect. I mean, it's it runs at high enough frame rate, and then also because the wall, the way when your camera turns, the walls distort a little bit because of the. It's not. Yeah, it's not a perspective, perspective correct. correct. Yeah. yeah. That it will uh, do that. You yeah. know, so. 
So do you want to do the next map, which is much longer, or do you sure. want to leave that? Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how long we've been recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Ooh, so a little bit of artwork. Okay. Yeah. That's, was that supposed to be the portal of uh, the guy at the head? No, no. It's just something something Kim put there. I mean, it looks like a headless guy. I mean, is it reference to what the, our announcer was telling us before? No, it's just a portrait hanging hanging in midair. Yeah, but it looks like the guy. It looks like a guy without his head. I, mean, so I wish it were a little higher res, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, that was something else. Is that we had to budget for memory in this right. thing. Right. Well, Hello. you have to do that in every game, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I think. What do we have? Three megs in this? Three megabytes? There's three megabytes on the three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two, and I can't remember what the trade-off was. Hello. Uh, whether it was one meg of VRAM and two megs of ordinary RAM, or if it was the other way around. Uh, I was one meg VRAM, I think, or two meg. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, every yeah, system... VRAM was more expensive. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, but it's still, you know, at least, at least the uh, the 3 d was actually really flexible, so you, you could really squeeze a lot into that. With, mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, I mean, coded six textures um, was actually pretty, whoops, it's actually pretty good. Because it had, you know, yes, you could have, you had, it allowed you all these oddball bit deaths, where it's like... Um, like the other platforms, like the PlayStation, it's like you had to be a power two. It was like everything was a power two. The bit depth, the resolution. Oh wow! And so you had things like uh, you know two bit, four bit, eight bit. There was no mm. like this. You could have five bit, six bit, and they also didn't have any kind of uh, compression. Right. So at least you had no. Like, actually, no. We had run length compression. No, you and the three DO did, but oh. I'm saying other platforms did. So even though like I think PlayStation had like a half meg more memory. Oh okay. Um, a lot of developers when they ported, they had trouble because. If you had, like, say, a 32 or 64 color thing, mm -hmm. you had the choice of knock it down to 16 colors mm -hmm. or go all that to 256, but then you would probably run out of memory. I came from there. Okay. So uh -huh. a lot of people just went down to, like, you know, they went down to the 16, the 16 color. Not 16 bit, 16 color. Oh, gosh. And so a lot of, the, you'd see a lot of stuff when they got ported to the PlayStation. It's like, it looks less colorful. It looks chunkier, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like they had to, they didn't have enough space. Even with that little bit of extra memory they had, they didn't have the extra space. I remember the developer PO had mentioned that. They, uh, had that. they had that issue when they ported to the PlayStation. It was like, oh, we, we had to trade off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? Because it, it had less flexible formats. And you, you saw that a lot on, you know. Right. Remember the N64 had that problem as well. It was like, yeah, no, the 3D, 3DO, for, you didn't have to have power of two dimensions on the textures. Um, they, although I asked the artists to do power of two textures because they made some of the projection math simpler, so I was able to well, get a, yeah, a minor, also, I was able also to get a minor speed your, up there. You also will uh, get rid of the stitching if you like put two different exactly, sizes. Exactly. Yes, that was that other. was another big deal was to uh, uh, get rid of the visible uh, cracks. Get rid of cracks between. Yeah. Whoops. But yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, so like I said, a lay person looking at this and looking at Doom would actually find a lot more aesthetically pleasing about this. Because you're saying, well, you you know, you and I know it's like, well, there's no floor textures or whatever. Right. But they're thinking, no, well, it's just solid fill a, on the floor and ceilings. Yeah, it's a house. Yeah. You know, it doesn't need, it, you know, doesn't necessarily need that. Um, and you probably could have put floor and ceiling textures in. It would have been, it would have hit the frame rate a bit. Yes, it would. But... Um, you would have had to do a little bit more math. And also would have distorted um, in strange ways, which uh, turns out um, from the previous uh, project that um, ultimately gave birth to this. Hello. Uh, I didn't want there to be excessive distortion on the textures. And it turns out um, people were perfectly okay to have uh, extremely distorted textures. Well, oh, there's just a monster storage yeah. corridor. Um, and the reason I know that is because Tomb Raider had excessively distorted textures oh. and was built on a grid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the other thing is, like, the distortion you're getting, mm -hmm. if you did just a standard ray cast engine, and, mm -hmm. you know, because you're not, you're not slicing this into vertical strips, are you? You're actually just rendering whole I'm just rendering whole, whole things. Yeah, in walls. fact, you can, you can see it here as yeah. I crawl right. against this wall. It just doesn't look right. Has that... Now, there has, is some clipping, which I do, yeah. pr um, you know, correctly. But uh, yeah, there's. Uh, Where am I? You you Good. get I that kind of, you get that kind of stretching distortion a bit even on a raycast engine. Mm. Um, it was once you hit the edges of. Uh... Well, it's just it'll 
because the the width the, the the camera mass isn't quite what it should be on most raycast engines. Uh, you you still ah. you still get that. You're out of keys. Uh -huh. Out of keys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go find a key. Ah, hello. Hello. I bet they have a key. <laughs> Actually, no. The I, um, I realize they can't drop keys. Yeah, yeah, they no they they have they carry nothing. Which you know, thankfully, I like. Because I'm really sick of games where it's like you kill something and then it's like it's you kill a rat and he's got, you know, a gold chest or something. It's like, <laughs> where the hell was that? Yeah, where are you, where are you keeping that? <laughs> you know, and do what, I want to would, know? In what, fact, don't tell me where that was. What would a specter do with you know, a key? You know, he can, right. He's a specter. He can probably walk ah. through walls like that guy just did. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's something I want to, when we get to map four, that's something I want to point out. Um, but yeah, coming through walls, not supposed to happen. Well, you're gonna you're gonna have a a patch for that <laughs> the title update for old three. Actually, I spent like a long time trying to figure that one out. Okay, hello. Yeah. Come here. Oh, yeah, I mean, but you know, look at because if you look at a game like Doom mm -hmm. compared to this, it's very monochromatic because they're on an eight bit screen. So it's right. like, okay, anything you want shade shading on, it's like okay, we gotta divide up our 256 colors into mm -hmm. shades of that color. So it's like, okay, we got gray, we got brown, we got green, and that's about really all we can afford. And a little red for a blood. Mm -hmm. So this game, you know, it's like, oh, things just have a lot of colors and shading and, you know, yeah, you can looks a little more natural than, than Doom looks a little more cartoony. And particularly, and then really, you know, Wolfenstein, which is what your benchmark was this, it looks very cartoony. There's a whole bunch of limitations that this engine obviously doesn't have. Like, Oops. you know, Wolfenstein, everything is pretty much floor to ceiling mm -hmm. um, because that's yeah. how they're doing it. Yeah. Well, well, Wolfenstein, no, Wolfenstein did not have um, floor and ceiling. No, that's what I mean. So I'm oh. saying, like, every texture is pretty much a vertical, because yes. it's doing it with a vertical, you know, strip. Mm -hmm. Just lots of vertical strips when they're ray casting out a ray for every, you know, once per every column mm -hmm. and saying okay that's so it's like doors have to slide horizontal and you know they can that's occasionally right, yeah. they can occasionally stick something on the whereas these actually you know the doors actually open you you can actually see through things like you can you know like you have cobwebs like in the corners of some of the doorways and stuff where it's like that would be very you couldn't really do that in the wolfenstein engine with there's a, with the understanding of forces, there's a lot of cheating going on in this game. For oh, example, yeah. like so, look at the frame of this door, this hallway here, right. and it's right flush with the wall. Now I go through and turn around, and now the frame is like one cube in. Yeah, because that's just you. You can only see the the outside of cube faces. So. Right, but you know people seem to be okay with it. Oh so. yeah, totally. But yeah, and as for the distortion, you know. It's actually kind of lucky for this type of game that the 3DO was quad-based mm -hmm. instead of triangle-based. Yes. Because if you play a game like this on the PlayStation, which is triangle-based, right. anything on the wall has that weird thing where it kind of flexes along the diagonal of the yeah. wall. So I saw you, that in Ridge Racer. I was going, yeah. what the heck are you guys doing? And it's like, because cool. it's because they don't have perspective correct, uh, perspective correct texture, and right. then everything has to be everything? along a triangle, which means... You know, anything that happens along like the diagonal axis mm -hmm. will just change position as you're creeping along it. And exactly. it looks really, really weird on the mm -hmm. PlayStation. And so it's like, you know, you know, like Tomb Raider, they try and make it, if they make it the texture busy, busy enough, people don't notice it. But, mm -hmm. or, um, what was it, Disruptor, Cerny's first person shooter. Oh. Yeah. That he did on the PlayStation, but he originally did for the 3DO. Never got released. But I played like a final version that was pretty much finished. And there was you would crawl. It looked much better on the 3DO because it was designed for the 3DO. Right, hey, that's the one with the uh, that was in a spaceship or something. And it was it was planetary based. You went from planet to planet. I think Mars was like one of them. I think but... I saw a prototype of that. But yeah, yeah, it, it was pretty much well because unfortunately, I mean, it's, it, or it, because it's a game like this. Uh oh. If I you have the room. engine running, <laughs> I know this room. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Gee, I wonder what's in here. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one thing I want to ask you. Did you? So there's only the one gun in the game. Yes. And hello, guys. Hello. You might want to get some more shots. <laughs> Did, was there ever any discussion of like, should we have click at least click. one other weapon, like a smart bomb or something? Or I, there might have been. Because um, I know that that's, not, that's one criticism I've seen in this game, but it's sort of like looking back, which is like, well, there's only one weapon. Whereas, like, 
Right. Well, you know, Wolfenstein only had a few weapons too, but you know, then you get into Doom and stuff where it's just like you know, weapon central for lifting. And I'm thinking like, well, you have a ghost gun, and these are ghosts. Right. What else are you going to use? You know. It's, <laughs> yeah, so it's like throwing a grenade might have been nice. A but... spectral grenade or something like that. <laughs> right. Um, no, I don't think there was any discussion of that. Um, partly due to the fact that we didn't have time to write the code or create the artwork. Hmm. So treasure room. Oh, you think? Eee. Yeah. Well, you think it was something more like, you know, the smart bomb or something, just to like make them all just go flop over dead. In one shot. <laughs> yeah, that that kind of would break the game. In what sense? Um, because then you just like, you know, hoard smart bombs until you get to like. Well, you, know, you obviously make them rare. It's like you don't give everybody, you know, the BFG. Like, why don't you just use the BFG <laughs> It's like, well, yeah, you make the ammo for it really rare or whatever. Or did, well, also, I guess, what button would you put on? Right, it's like, right. Know, we ran. We were also <laughs> you could do cording, I suppose. But well, no, although, that, no, I don't think that was. Although ever... you know, it's like later games did kind of figure it out on the 3DO how to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, usually like have a shift button or something. Okay. But yeah, this is. Uh... So how many how many levels are there to the game? Twelve. There's Twelve, right? Yes. So, that was like a four-story house in the intro video. <laughs> uh, well, I think, they think there's some underground stuff, too. And, oh, and you also go end up going through the garden. Well, yeah, I know you go to the garden, but was the idea is like each level is like... And the graveyard. Like every two levels is like one... Because you're also... It's the same uh, wall textures and... Right. So we're, for, reusing, for two levels. we're reusing a lot. Yeah, every two levels were th the, thematically similar. Yeah. Um, and we were just basically like, you know, trying to maximize... Uh, the use of our art assets. Uh, yes. But yeah, the... Uh, Which, I, mean, um, I mean, just having those rotating gems, you couldn't have done that in Doom. Just because it's like it, they would have looked like some checkerboard, mm -hmm. you know, grainy, <laughs> bit-reduced uh, thing. It took a long time before, you know. That was a nice thing. Yeah, it, Dave Needle, you know, who designed the hardware, did, you know, a wonderful job. And he did just come off of, uh, hello, uh, the Atari Lynx. And so he had a lot of uh, ideas about how to, you know, maximize. Oops. Ah! Uh, had a lot of ideas about how to maximize, um, you know, art, art assets, and you know, get the most out of uh, out of bits. Um, God yes. Oh yeah. We want to have that discussion. We had uh, where, where we were. I remember on M two. Mm -hmm. Sitting in a room with our ex SGI people. Oh, that guy. Yeah, um, <laughs> that guy. And yes. They wanted to like remove like literally like eighty percent of the texture formats in the M2 supported. Mm -hmm. And you know, because yeah, so it's like we're running out of silicon. No, no, no. Okay, that's 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 the infuriating part of the whole discussion. So we had that whole discussion, and because we were saying it's like, well, what can we? And we, I, I came into this because I had to come up with examples of like what that would mean to game development like uh -huh. in terms of like what you could fit in terms of memory and the size of the textures and what that would look like and all that mm -hmm. stuff and so we're having this whole discussion and i said well how much silicon is this going to save you're like oh we're not going to save silicon we just want to stop we just want to uh cut down the amount of testing we have to do and i'm just like so you're not even going to change the chip you're just basically wanted your team's job Really? QA team to be a little easier. That ha that I hadn't heard. I thought and they were I trying like, to save silicon. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because they had a limit of 13 by 13 millimeters. Yeah. Which... But they weren't going to... They were just going to disable them on the... Ch they were just, oh, and I was for, like... Yeah, exactly. Now I hate them even more. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but to me, it's like... That sort of explains a lot of things what I saw in the N64. Where it's like, you know... You have to have power to textures. They have to be power to bit maps mm -hmm. all stuff. Because... We were having that discussion of like you know, you know, as long as you ha can have non-square textures, mm -hmm. you don't have to have the restriction of power two for doing mip mapping and you know the level of detail stuff. Right. You have all the silicon chip, you have all the silicon you need mm -hmm. in hardware to do all those calculations. You're just making, you're just making your life easier. And so whenever I, so like even years after M2 was done, we were seeing. Every now and then I come across a PC 3D accelerator that had that weird limitation of like that's got to be a power of two or you know stuff like that, and I'm just like this has got to be from like Silicon Graphics school of thought, where it's like somebody who didn't know anything about silicon never stood up to the guys and said, you know you you don't need to make that restriction, 
it's just you guys are just used to that from your workstation background of doing that. It's like, well, you know, power two, that makes life easier. That makes the math easier, you know. It, well, it does. It does make the math easier, and also, but well, if you're running software, yes. But once you have the hard, like I said, once you have the hardware to do like a non-square texture, you don't need that power two restriction anymore. But you still, you still have to worry about like stitching. It has to be a multiple of a power of two. No, you don't have to worry about stitching either. Um, once, because we we worked this out on paper and stuff, uh, and we were and we and he had finally conceded, and basically it was more just like, well, they were just used to doing their testing matrix a certain. Hello. <laughs> Hey, hey, boss man, how's it doing? <laughs> One thing I wish I would have done is that you could have like shot through guys, like you know. And I'm out. <laughs> is there anything more in that room? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. And there, there yeah, there might be more yeah. monsters, is what there might be. Well, it was like uh, you know, crap. it's one of those things where it's like you know, a corporate culture kind of like yeah. has effects later down the line where it's like, hey, our XSGI guys are better than your SXGI guys, or our XGI, X, S, X, SGI guys mm -hmm. were because they lived in-house and they had to live with, you know, the actual developers and the opera stuff, mm -hmm. we would call them on their stuff. Whereas, like, you know, because, like, Nintendo had subcontracted these guys out, uh -huh. they're just like, yep, sorry, Power 2 Textures can't do anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way it works. <laughs> What you gonna do? Yeah. Nope, nothing in here. So yeah, so was, that's why I thought it was so nice about him too. It's like it had, you know, that wonderful you know workstation graphics ex experience mm. in it, but also it had the we know how to squeeze every last bit mm -hmm. out of something because like if we can't even if we can't use something right now, somebody down the road is gonna use that register or they're gonna use that format, you know, right. that oddball format. They're gonna make a whole game around it, you know. You learn that from the Atari 2600. It's like, hey, this register that we nobody thought we'd ever touch. Guess what? We touched it. And look, we got a star field for free out of it. <laughs> so yeah, that's. Anybody hiding over there? So I, I thought that's why that was so great. It's like you know, you had the opera guys who were like used to squeezing stuff out of you know performance mm -hmm. out of stuff or you know yeah. finding last bit of space. Hello, a mighty more ah! power head. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so now it makes total sense. I always wondered, like, how is it those guys could do so much damage to you, like, later in the game? Like, it's like, he hit me just once. I was like, no, he, he with a Is zillion he, bullets. He, he hitting you, like, 20 times. Ah, jeez, these guys are everywhere. <laughs> so for those of you who got, ever got, uh, yeah, got right. bitch slapped by one yeah, of those yeah, floating yeah. cats, Blaine John Luke. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> And, and me too for not calling him on it, but I mean, you know, we had, there had to be some kind of difficulty, even if it was only kind of pretend. But it's a game. Isn't it? yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's an interesting. I mean, the idea is like, hey, the more you kill, the harder they get. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's uh, one way of doing sort of rubber banding uh, difficulty. somebody around this corner I find and I'm not sure why it worked out this way but the hitbox is slightly to the left of what you can see so hmm. was it the uh, the sickle by putting him off the center the center that, of the object that, is versus the that, uh, that might be it yeah see see it just looked like it went right under his arm I mean, you didn't do like a pixel, uh, pixel actually collision detection. No, <laughs> too expensive. Oh. Hello. Nope, too expensive. So didn't do a three D ray cast. Nope. Yeah. Although, I mean, so the machine I had worked on prior to the to the three D O was the Amiga. Right. Which is, um, um, oh gosh. Yeah, ah. You can't shoot his shots either, can you? Like, um, right actually, them. you yeah, but they only shoot one of them. Oh, it shoots the first one. Yeah, so. it shoots the one, whatever it contacted. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, Amiga, um, right. which was a 7 megahertz, 68,000. And then uh, eventually I was on the um, the Amiga 3000, which was a you know 25 megahertz, so 30. Right. 
this machine was delightfully fast compared to those. And it was just, I mean, it was a real treat just working on it because it was just so damn quick. And, but what really impressed me was the architecture. It was the first time I'd ever touched the ARM CPU, which is now as common as dirt. It's in everyone's cell phone. But it was the first time I'd ever, I'd heard about it. Dave Needle had said nice things about it back in the, uh, the mid-1980s. Um, he said, yeah, there's this, uh, there's this CPU called the ARM, and they're like $10 in onesies, and they're really fast. Uh, and apparently he first encountered it at Apple um, long before they released the Newton, which was also ARM-based. So I got a chance to play with it here, and I, I just thought it was great. I, it's still my favorite CPU architecture of, of all the ones that I've actually uh, messed with. Yeah, that's kind of weird that no, no consoles, I think, besides the 3D, ever used the ARM processor. I mean, there was like the Archimedes computer used it, right? But then after that, it was like, it kind of went away. They, people were sticking, you know, RISC, uh, was it, uh, R3000s and... Uh, yeah, there was MIPS. S MIPS. Yeah, MIPS, the MIPS, yeah, the MIPS, the MIPS R3000, and then there was like the, the Hitachi SH2s yeah. and all stuff. But the ARM, I thought, yeah, it had a really great architecture. That was just like, like uh, I remember just when I took an ARM uh, programming class uh, at 3Yo mm -hmm. for the first time. Although, you know, M2 was PowerPC based. <laughs> yes, it uh, was. PowerPC 602. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but the arm, I thought, it had some weird, you know, some things where it's like it was very counterintuitive, but Considering in a good way, in a good way, uh, like things like oh, like sometimes it was actually faster to actually do a, a jump to a subroutine than the inline stuff a lot of times on the mm -hmm. arm, which made writing having C code would actually compile really nicely onto it and be very efficient compared to like other things where it's like you were constantly trying to. Mm -hmm. oh, fool but... the compiler into doing good assembly versus you know the arm was just architected to naturally execute C code mm -hmm. in just a nice efficient but what manner. I, but what I really liked about the ARM um, was, was, another thing that I really liked about the ARM was that um, it did integer multiplies really fast compared to the 68,000. The 68,000 would do a multiply in something like 70 clocks and the, uh, the ARM would do it in 16. Um, there was, however, no divide instruction on the ARM and so you had to do that in, in code. In, right. in, in freeform code. But, so when I say, you know, do, oh, just do a raycast. No, too expensive because you had to do divides and stuff like that. There's less. Remember, mortal, you are trespassing on these floors. Soon, evil spirits and multitudes of the undead will block your path. So, so that's two whole maps. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, but same. only but only one texture set. But only, <laughs> only one. Only one. Oh, so yeah, we could do thematic. Yeah. yeah, the next one. But um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, jeez. But yeah, that's. Uh, you want to rag on the uh, intro movie or something? <laughs> actually, no. There's some actually, wait. Stuff. No, no, no. Hang on. Hang on. So I don't have to do this again. Ah, yes. <laughs> you forgot to save mortal. Ah. <laughs> Less uh, doing his best. Uh, I can't think of the actor's name now. That he does, he does, does the voice of like the haunted mansion, uh -huh. and Oops. I think he also did like uh, he was like one of Disney's voices. But he also did like the Chuck Jones uh, Grinch cartoon. It was like you're a mean one, Mister Grinch. Huh. <laughs> he sings that song. Oh, uh, but he's also the voice of like the haunted mansion. Oh my God! I forgot we could do lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, next gen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's been too long. Hang on. You're done. All now, right. you're not going to erase the... <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't it's... erase all the saved games. Well, you're saving Monster Mountain games. I might as well clear out all of the NV around. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't do that. We, we, we were not the horde. The horde, yes. Uh... <laughs> But uh, so, so now we can pick up from where we left off. Right. Next time, uh, thank you everybody for joining us for this uh, little look back. We'll be uh, uh, doing uh, the next uh, map or two uh, when we see you next time. And uh, thank you all very kindly for visiting.